Hello again, Ben McCallum here. Now I'm going to show you today, for those of you that have just purchased the Aperture program for Mac, how to use the software. So what I'm going to do, I've got already got a library here, so I'm just going to work off this library as a start and we'll go from there. So this is ba the basic setup of the whole program, so you will have already noticed this. Um, we've got up here on the left hand side, there's three little tabs. We have the library tab, which will enable you to sort through your photographs. We also have the info bar, which enables you to customize the metadata for your photographs. And then we have the adjustments over here as well. So I usually leave mine on the library so I can sort through everything. But one of the things you need to know about the library is you need to make specific folders for everything or it's going to become a nightmare if you don't start to sort your photographs from day one. I have several libraries. I make a new library for a new subject. If I go and do a job, I'll make a new library. So this one here is just for my diving um, for the last couple of weeks that I've gone out diving and I've made a new project. So whenever you're going to import a photograph, I would recommend coming down to this little bar here, which has got the new and creating a new project. You can call the new project, whatever it's uh, appropriate. I'm just going to call it some random number. And then when you import the images, I'm going to use the import tool here. You'll obviously find the the, uh, the parts which you're after, and then you'll import them and make sure to, to select the project that you want, and then you can import them. I'm not going to go into the import settings at the moment because this is just to show you the basic editing. I'll show you some other features later. So I'm just going to come back down here to show you how to actually use the full interface here for actually editing photographs. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to come down here. I had a photo selected before, which is now moved on me because I've got the wrong thing selected. Okay, so if I push F, it's going to pull this whole thing into a full screen mode, which is what I prefer to work in because you can see a lot more of the photos that you're dealing with. Now, there's another shortcut. If you push H, it will pull up the heads up display unit, which gives you the same options that we had before, but they're in a floating window. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you how each one of these tools affects the image and the basic use for it. So the very first thing at the top of the list is the white balance. Now that will change the, obviously, the white balance and the way that the camera has taken the photograph. Seeing as this is an underwater photo, this is a perfect place to show this example because cameras notoriously struggle underwater to get a right, correct white balance. So to set a white balance, you want to click on this little dropper here and you'll come and find an area which you would assume is close to white. Now I'm just going to choose this little blob here because the particles are usually fairly close and click on it. Now you'll see that has made a massive difference straight off the bat and increased the photo to actually give more of the true colors that were there. So that will show you the very first step. You can go in and you can do the fine tuning of this, but I won't do that for the moment. Okay, coming down into the next section here, this is referring to the exposure or basically how bright your photo was taken when it was first taken. So if you've taken a photograph which is too dark, if you've photographed using your camera in the raw mode, you will get the best results out of this submenu here. Obviously, clicking on the exposure and bringing up will make the whole image brighter, and if you go the opposite direction, it will make it darker. So for argument's sake, let's make it a little bit brighter. Now, this one here, recovery is another good tool for actually trying to capture back some of the information which is lost in areas which are far too bright. So if you've taken a photograph of the sky and you've lost the clouds because they're too bright, the recovery can show you what has been missed. Now, what I want to show you here is another little tool. I'm not going to be able to show you it on that photograph, unfortunately. Let me just find another photo so I can actually show you this properly. Now, what you'll notice is up here in the recovery section, I'm going to go to the recovery again, all the information up here has been lost. If I hold down the command button and then click on the recovery tool, it will bring up a mask layer to show what has been ruined in the photograph and what it's going to try and save. So by bringing that in, you can show and you can start to see what has been, the information has been brought back in within, within the image. So it's brought back a bit more of the information in here. If I turn that on and off, you'll be able to see a little bit of a difference. It may not show up on the internet, but it does make a fairly big difference. You don't want to use this too much though because it can make your bright colors turn a dull gray. So that's the first one on that one there. I'm going to go back to the other image now. I'll try not to 
sort through the images too much because it will get a little bit frustrating for everybody. I've already lost my image that I was dealing with before. Oh, I've gone. Okay, so now we've gone back to this image again. Now I'm going to pull up this display again, and the next menu down here is the black point. This will adjust, obviously, where the blacks start. So if we pull that up, you'll notice that the dark areas get fairly dark, and the opposite direction goes the opposite direction. So you know that one refers to the dark points. Um, now the brightness is obviously that's very simple. That just refers to the brightness that will go up and down. Now, one of the little tools, if you want to actually reset, if you've done an adjust adjustment and you want to reset it, if you simply double click on it, it will jump back to where it is. So coming back down into the enhance tool, the contrast will affect the lights and the darks. If you increase that, the blacks will get blacker and the whites will get whiter. If you go in the opposite direction, it will turn into a flat image. So you'll notice the darks are getting darker in this one. And then if I go the opposite direction, it turns into a very flat image. Now, the definition is a very good one. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to push Z. Now, Z is a zoom tool, and it will zoom in to a finer point of the photograph. Now, by grabbing the definition, if you pay attention to this piece of seaweed here, you'll notice the edge detail around the image get fairly, fairly defined by the increase of that. Now, again, you have to use it sparingly because it can ruin photographs if you do it too much. Now, these two tools here are one of my favorite ones that you can use. Now, a lot of people use the saturation tool because they think it is the best way to put more color into a photograph. Yes, it adds more color. However, it tends to make things a lot faker than what you're after. Instead of using the saturation tool, you're better off using the vibrancy tool. The vibrancy tool will increase your colors, but it won't do it to the same extent of the saturation tool. So that's a nice way to increase your colors without making it look fake. If you need to add a little bit more color, you can grab the saturation and increase it just a little bit more. Now, coming down here to the highlights area, this is a very, very handy tool. This is one of the ones which you can use again to get more information out of areas which have lost the uh, information. By increasing the highlights, it will decrease the actual areas uh, that are the bright areas. So if you pay attention to the sand, it should get darker, or if I can actually grab it, should get darker and brighter depending on what it is. Again, that's very good for the sky. The shadows tool does the same thing, but it does it for the shadow areas, of course. And then the mid contrast, it does that for the mid tones. Now, I'm going to show you some of these more advanced features here, which I think are very, very, very important for you to know that they're there. The main one that I would recommend starting to use in the add adjustments tool is the curves tool. Now the curves tool will bring up your standard curves bar which enables you to adjust a large portion of the photograph. When it's in the RGB mode it's referring to the luminous of the actual image so you're referring so it will be editing the whole image instead of individual colors. A common way of doing this is by increasing either the whole image up or down or there's another one referred to as an S curve. Now this area down here represents the blacks, and this area up here represents the whites. So it's basically on a two platform scale, so you've got black to white, and then it goes black to white again. So if I was to grab this point here and drag this down, it will make the black areas blacker. If I grab this part up here, it will make the brighter areas brighter, effectively increasing the contrast of the photograph. Very, very handy if you want to make a image which has more mood and it's one of the best ways to just improve the whole look of a photograph. So that was the first one that is renowned, known as a basically a standard S curve. If I was to grab this and pull it up it will make the whole image brighter because it is basically this line here is the initial line and it is turning everything in the brighter direction so it will do that to the whole image as opposed to going the opposite direction which will make the whole image darker. Now one of the other really good features of this is you can actually choose the channels that you want. So you can come down and you have the red, the green, and the blue. Now this being an underwater photo, you have a tendency of losing the reds out of an image very, very quickly. So 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on the red and I say, I need a little bit more red here. So instead of actually choosing an individual spot, I'm going to pretty much add just a tiny little bit of red to the whole image. You can then go to the blue or the green. You can say, oh, the green area, I, I don't want quite as much green. So you can remove the green or you can be a little bit more specific and you can remove it from certain areas, be it the black zones uh, or the highlight zones. And you can do the same with the blue and you can adjust it. And that is a brilliant way of being able to do minor adjustments to get really, really great results. So that is one of the most useful tools in Aperture that I would recommend you getting your head around and trying to use. Just fiddle around with it and you'll get an idea of how it works. Now, there's another tool in here which can be very handy. I'll just have to uh, make sure that I find it. So we have the, ah, oh, gone past it, is the color bar. Now, if you pull up the color bar, this actually pulls up the individual colors and you can choose to edit these colors. So say we choose on the blue color and we gives you four different methods that you can do here. It gives you the hue, so you can actually change that blue in the direction towards more purple or towards a more pale blue. You can adjust the saturation or the luminous. Now, luminance is brilliant because it will actually effectively make the color jump out or disappear a little bit more into the background. Now, if we grab the hue, as you'll notice on this one, it adjusts the colors towards that color range. Now, what this does here, this little range tool, this enables you to adjust how far either side of this color you'll be adjusting. So if I pull that up, when I now make this adjustment, it will do it to a greater range around that previous color and give you more of an effect. So you can effectively go through and choose individual colors and adjust them accordingly. So in this thing, as there's a fair bit of red here, I should be able to basically turn those purple by decreasing the hue to that, increasing the range so that it grabs all of the reds, and then I can increase the saturation and things will start to turn into a completely crazy image. So by going through and doing fine adjustments in the color bar, you can actually make a really, really good change to your photographs. So they are some of the very basic tools of the uh, Aperture program. Now, there are a whole bunch more here. They're basically, you know, different variations of some of the tools and some of them are different, but the best way to learn is to go in there, have a look and just fiddle with them and see what happens. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get out of this and I'm going to show you another thing. I'm going to pull up another library because I have a whole bunch of libraries here. Like I said, every time I do something, I'll create a new library because it makes life a lot easier when you're trying to find photos in the future. Now, this image here has been edited pretty much on its own in Aperture. Now, what you can do is come through and as I said, with the colors, this is, I thought this would be a good idea to show you. Say I wanted to make these greens more uh, bright. Now, I can choose the green color here. I can increase the saturation so there's more green to them. And by grabbing the luminous, I can actually make them pop out a lot more. So they're almost a neon sort of look. So they are some of the very basic fundamentals of how Aperture works. All of the other tools are basically variations of how you can do things and they can be used on their own or conjunction with other areas. Now, one of the other things which I just wanna show you, which is a good little tip for you, sometimes this heads up display can get in the way of what you're trying to see. If you hold down the shift button whilst you're about to do an adjustment, you'll notice that it disappears and only leaves the bar of the area that you're working with. So you can actually go through and make the adjustment without the heads up display being in the way. So that is another nice little handy hint. I'm gonna push H and get rid of the heads up display again and F to get back out. And basically that is the overview of how to do most of the color effects to a photograph that are in there. Now you do have these other little tools which can be very, very handy. You have a straighten tool. By selecting that you can adjust how the horizon looks within an image. The crop tool which enables you to give customized uh, cropping ratios. So you have your standard ones which are here and then you can click on your custom ones which then enables you to go through and crop down images. And then you have the red eye tool which works quite well but then one of the other little fancy things which I do like about Aperture is this little brush tool. 
Now this enables you to go through and adjust a whole bunch of things actually using a brush and painting them in. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to change to another library again so that I can show you this on a more appropriate image. So hold on for two seconds. So here we have a whole bunch of crazy photos from a day at the races. If I can find a starting one. So I'm going to come in to full screen. Now if you bring your mouse up to the very top, you'll notice that it comes up with this bar. So I'm going to click on this and what I first want to do is I want to go to the skin smoothing tool. So by zooming in and pushing Z, it will bring it up to 100%. I'm going to hold down the space bar, which will enable me to move the mouse around. And I'm going to push H to bring up the heads up display and I'm just going to move it over to the side. Now this skin smoothing tool enables you to basically do a one stop skin smoothing very, very quickly. And for those of you that don't have the money or don't really want to spend the time having to get Photoshop, this can be effective way of doing it. So you can come in and you can paint the areas that you want to do the skin smoothing. And you'll notice that it automatically will go through and smooth out the skin of the areas that you're painting. Now, once you've done what you wanted to do, you can go around and paint it. You can be very precise. And if you accidentally miss a spot, you can go back and you can also use the erasing tool, which will remove the effect. But once you've painted things in, what it will do, it also brings up a skin smoothing tool within your heads up display. Now this is effectively what controls the actual skin smoothing and how intense it is. By increasing the radius, you will increase the effect so that it will be using a, uh, a larger radius for the skin smoothing. And by increasing the intensity, it will do more of a uh, obviously more of the effect as well. So it's one of those things that you can go through, have a play, and it works very, very well for what you're doing. Now, there's a whole bunch of other ones in here. The best way to do it is to go through and just have a little bit of a play and see what they do. Like we have the polarized one here, which will multiply. I'll just decrease this and I'll give you an idea of what it does. So if we go around on the eyes, it just makes that area and uses the colors of what's already there and basically layers them on top of each other. So that's another one of the tools which is very, very handy. Now, one last tool that I'll show you before we go, if you're looking to do your work and you wanna do it from a distance like this, if you push the little tittle button which is actually next to the number one, it brings up a little menu, uh, a little, sorry, a little loop which you can then use to zoom in. So you don't have to go in and out, you can actually go through and individually scale the image and make sure that it's doing what you want. So you can have the vast majority of the image shown and actually still zoom in on the areas that you want. So that is the basic of how the actual functions within Photoshop, uh, sorry, not Photoshop, within Aperture work. And that will give you a good idea and a good base to start from. I'll make another video on a future date to show you some advanced import tools which will enable your life to work a little bit easier and also a nice little way to watermark your photographs when you export them so that when you put them on the internet, they automatically have a watermark on there which will reduce your time of having to go through and stamp each image very, very quickly. I'm Ben McCallum. That's a quick video on Aperture and I'll chat to you later.